So every project starts with an idea, but ultimately the execution is where it all comes together. And a project that I worked on over the course of the last few days is what happens to a scallop from when it lands on a fishing boat to when it ends up on a plate, on a restaurant, whatever it is. So what I did was uh, this morning I put together all the material that I shot, I created a timeline and I put it on a board. Some of the editors are looking at it, so let's go check it out. So, uh, <laughs> I'm here with uh, Jack Spillane. He's the Sunday editor. Sorry. I love surprising people. How are you doing, Jack? <laughs> I'm a surprise. Hi there. And Jerry Boggs, he's uh, responsible for putting it all together and make sure that the reader gets the best value for their buck. So, what are we working on today is a story about scallops and what happens from the moment it arrives to the moment it gets consumed. So, here's um, a quick... Uh, recap photographically of what I shot over the last couple of days. So the first two sections is when it lands, how it gets unloaded from a boat. Like these are 50 pound bags, the scallops are all inside. They shuck them when they're out on the boat and they throw the shells overboard. So this is all that comes back on, on the boat. Um, after that, um, the bidders will go through looking at these huge um, bins with between 1,200 and 1,600 pounds of scallops. So this guy's from a fish house somewhere. He looks at it, checks the quality, smells it. Then this is the actual bidding process. So these are the crew members of a fishing boat uh, at the New Bedford display auction. They're looking at to see what fish houses are bidding on their product. Then a fish house processes the actual thing, um, sorts them by size and so on. So a project like this, um, it's not that hard to do. I mean, the idea is to create a timeline that makes sense. But when you look at it like this, something becomes obviously evident that there's a missing step. There's something missing here. And that is the final product. What happens to it? Uh, does, does a buyer go and, and pick it up from the fish house? No. So they'll have to buy it from a, uh, a market. So, or, an, or consume it in a restaurant who bought it from a market. Um, so that's what we plan on doing. Now, Jack. Um, how hard is it to put together like this? I mean, obviously, I'm one simple component to the big machine, but you're talking writers and so on. How does it work? Well, Jer Jerry is the, the guy who really uh, does the whole design and, yep. and uh, works with our, our professional designers in Texas. I'm sort of like the big picture guy, like what kind of story is this? But I mean, and assigning uh, uh, the reporters. So, so what happened originally? You, you came up with the idea? The reporter came well, up with the idea? Well, this is actually an interesting story. Um, a previous reporter, um, Artie Guha, who used mm -hmm. to work here, had the idea and to follow Scallop. She was not a fishing reporter, but she had this very interesting idea to follow. Actually, it was a, a, a Scallop or a piece of fish uh, from the moment it's caught until the moment it lands in the table. Right. She had this on her uh, budget and she left the paper for, uh, to move up in the world. And um, another, we still had it as a story that we'd like to do, and another reporter, uh, Wes Sykes, who's, who's right. the reporter on this, saw it and uh, he decided he wanted to do it. And so we, we narrowed the focus a little bit to, to just uh, be on the waterfront because we didn't have the opportunity to go out to sea uh, for this one. And um, so this is sort of like uh, the institution of the knowledge going from one generation to another. Uh, so that's how this uh, story started. And I mean, we all know how important the waterfront is to the community. And as a, as a newspaper, I mean, there is no greater feeling than informing people about something they might not even know what the process is in this case. I mean, we all eat scallops, but how many people actually know that they come in 50 yeah. pound bags off of a boat? <laughs> you know? I'm very excited about this story. I've, I've been here 18 years, we've never, uh, took taking such a, a, a close up look at the process of of um, scallop uh, from from sea to table, and you know, uh, seafood processing houses are as big a part of the fishing industry as the actual fishing exactly. effort. Exactly, and we 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 spend very little time on that. We've been to sea any number of times, but actually, uh, spending a whole lot of time in the seafood houses, we haven't done that as much. So this is a great opportunity with your photographs. Be cool. Uh, so Jerry, now now you're presented with a wall of photos. <laughs> Um, and a guy from Kentucky uh, who would prefer um, uh, land-based uh, stuff <laughs> probably a little better. This is kind of cool, right? Yeah, it's very interesting as being a relative, you know, a year in New England to... Uh, I'm learning a lot about the process that I had no idea. Um, 
you know, I'm sure that all the scallops that we got in Kentucky have been frozen and on the truck for two or three days. <laughs> so seeing the, you know, the connection from, you know, all the guys on the waterfront to the folks in the, you know, five-star restaurants uh, and beyond is really fun to, uh, to connect all the dots and see how we all kind of rely on each other and how the process is so, so tremendously inter- inter- intermingled. And, uh, you know, the story's good. I've read the story. It's got a lot of really amazing anecdotes from the... Uh, from the auction and uh, you know the guys on the waterfront stuff like that but to be able to see it while you're reading it and it just makes your understanding a lot better and I think it's good for the community to understand it it's for such sure. an important part of the economy if you're going to value it you need to understand it right and how, how difficult is it for you as someone who's eventually going to make the choice of what goes where how difficult is it to take whatever this is, 25 photographs <laughs> and narrow it down to five or six. Because, I mean, obviously the paper has a... Online, we're going to run everything. Yeah. But how, do you, how difficult is it for you to eventually make the decision of what goes and what doesn't? Yeah, it's, it's really difficult because I want to use everything because I'm a visual guy also. But part of it is having read the story, some of the photos jump out to say, okay, this is something that you'll read about, you'll see it, you'll be able to connect it immediately and it'll augment the story. One will augment the other instead of just kind of standing alone. Because, you know, if you put the pictures up stand alone, it would be good. The story's going to make it better. The story's going to be good. The right photos will make it better. So sometimes, you know, having kind of a photographic background, I want to pick the best picture, but sometimes that doesn't make that connection as well. So that's that's kind of the hard part. So when were you seeing this in the paper, Jack? Sunday. Sunday. So, Sunday, April the... I'm putting you on the spot. Uh, I'm putting you on the spot. Today's the 13th, 14th, 15th, 16th. So, yeah. So, Sunday, um, you'll see the, the final product. Hope you like it. You can thank guys like Jack, like Jerry. I'm just one guy in the big wheel. Bye.